Among the many advances America is justly proud of are the forward strides of her medical profession. Great hospitals dot her cities, where delicate and undreamed of operations are successfully performed daily. Research laboratories seek the prevention of disease. Nurses and medical students are trained for the fight against discomfort and suffering. And today, we find Chester A. Riley facing a grim situation with his usual calm stoicism. Gillis! I'm choking! Gillis! Gillis, get me a tent! I need oxygen! Gillis! Stop yelling! I told you a hundred times not to put those rivets in your mouth. Oh, hold still. Oh, it's dark in there. I can't see nothing. Quiet, quiet. What's going on here? It's a very interesting case, Hawkins. Ryle here swallowed a rivet. Now, the way I diagnose it, we got two methods. Pull it out or drive it home. <laughs> Look, those rivets cost money. Now, you men stop fooling around with them. Get him up to Doc Fisher. That's a good idea. Come on, Ryle. I think. There we are. Tiny little fishbone lodged in the epiglottis. And you sounded like you swallowed the whole fish, fins and all. <laughs> Can you imagine? I eat a salmon and he stabs me. Uh, uh, thanks, Doc. I'll see you around. Oh, just a moment, please. What's the matter? Open your mouth again and say, ah. What for? Is there another one swimming upstream? <laughs> ah. Please. Ah. <laughs> That's all right. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's all right. You can shut your mouth now. Ah, I'm okay. And uh, Doc? You will be as soon as they're removed. What's removed? You, you can't see my appendix from way up there. <laughs> you have enlarged and inflamed tonsils that ought to come out. What for? I, I've had them all my life. They're attached to me. In their condition, immediate and serious complications can develop. I've had them all my life. He's had them all his life. Tonsils can be a contributing factor in rheumatic endocarditis, septicemia. You're a sick man, Ryan. You've got the book. I would say an immediate operation is necessary. Hop, hop, operation. Well, there's no cause for alarm. A tonsillectomy is as simple as your ABCs. Well, I had a lot of trouble with them in the second grade. <laughs> I'll make arrangements for you with the husband. Let's say in about a year, huh, Doc? I'll arrange it for tomorrow. Come on, Ryle, you're all through. Uh... <laughs> you have me to cottage hospital, please. You can do it now, Doc. He's passed out. Come on. <laughs> Junior! Gee, Pop, I didn't know you were there. Never mind, Junior. Just stand there for a minute like you are. What for? I want to get a picture of you in my mind, playing innocently on the front stoop. What's wrong, Pop? Something the matter with your leg? No, Junior, my trouble is further north than that. <laughs> September Simeon. <laughs> Holy smoke! Is it dangerous? Junior, your father is facing the Grim Reaper. No fool! You better go in the house, Pop. Where's your mother? In the kitchen with Babs. You gotta break it to her gently. Any sudden shock might lay her out flat. You gotta lead up to her little by little. Okay, Pop. I'm with you. Thanks, son. I knew I could depend on you. Let's go in now. You can help me just a little. Sure, Pop. Oh, here comes Daddy. And He's walking with a cane. Oh, I hope he hasn't turned his ankle again. Oh, Riley. Well, what's wrong? Did you hurt yourself, Daddy? Here, sit down. Nothing. Don't bother about me. Well, what is it, dear? I can see by your face that there's something wrong. Here's a pillow, Tom. Thanks, Junior. 
You want to put on your slippers? Well, if you want to, Junior, I don't think they'll fit you. Oh, stop this foolishness, dear, and tell me what's the matter. Sit down, Babs. You too, Peg. I want to see you as I'll always remember you. Working your fingers to the bone. <laughs> Best family a man ever had. All right, Riley, let's have it. Tonsils. <laughs> the doc says I've got to have them both out at the same time. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad. I'm the one that's got to go through the torture. <laughs> Don't be a baby. Tonsillectomy today is practically nothing. Golly, I thought you were stricken with something terrible. <laughs> I thought he was going to kick the bucket. Keep going. It's a big joke. I'm glad my tonsils tickle everybody. <laughs> Sorry, dear, but there's nothing really to get excited about. Nothing to get excited about, she says. All they're going to do is rip my throat from ear to ear and tear out my tonsils. They don't cut your throat, Daddy. They just snip them out through your mouth. Kid at school had them burned out. Nobody's shoving a blowtorch down my throat. Yeah, you're a brave man. You're no coward. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, Pebs. I ain't yellow. I can go through with it. <laughs> well, that's the spirit, dear. Oh, boy, Pop. Sure. It's a simple operation. The doctor explained it to me. There's nothing to it. All they do is take a big pair of shears about that long, and then they shove them down your throat. And then they chop and chop and chop. <laughs> <laughs> Almost finished, Gillis. My last will and testament. <laughs> I, Chester A. Riley, being of sound mind. No good, Ryle. <laughs> you can get ten years for perjury. <laughs> Why don't you go up the street and see Mrs. Parker? I never met her. What's the difference? She had her tonsils taken out last year. She can tell you the ropes and give you some courage, you know. Chester A. Riley don't need to go to no helpless woman for courage. Uh, but I'll drop in on her after supper just to be neighborly. <laughs> Well, no, I, I'm Chester A. Riley. I live down the street. I'd like to speak to your mother about the hospital. Oh, just a minute. Riley. Who was it, Amy? Junior and Dad's body father. He wants to see you about the twins, I think. Well, why didn't you let him in? Peg Riley must be expecting another. You go and finish the formula, darling. Okay. Good evening. Oh, hello, Mrs. Parker. I... I don't know how to say this, but I'd like your advice about something. Oh, I certainly, Mr. Riley. Won't you come in? Oh, no, no thanks. I, I, I can take it better in the fresh air. Of course, Mr. Riley. I realize the strain you're under. But you must understand, it's your wife's problem, too. Yes, I know. That's what worries me. Why couldn't this thing have happened when I was single? <laughs> single? Yeah, then I'd be the only one that would have to suffer. Mr. Riley, you must remember that it's perfectly normal. It happens every day. Just look at me. I had two of them. <laughs> Doesn't everybody have two of them? <laughs> Not usually. Oh, you should have seen the joy in Mr. Parker's eyes when I brought them home from the hospital. You brought them home? <laughs> I'd hardly leave them there. And you know, sometimes Mr. Parker and I could hardly tell one from another. <laughs> Why do you keep looking at them? <laughs> Will you come on in? I'll let you hold one. With my bare hands? <laughs> I think you'll have to use both hands. They each weigh seven pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, Mr. Riley, they just eat like little piggies. They eat. <laughs> 
children. Mrs. Parker, your tonsils should be on television. I lost my tonsils last year, Mr. Riley. I just had twins. Twins? Tonsils. <laughs> oh, Mr. Riley. <laughs> A little thing like twins. She's laughing at my tonsils. <laughs>